Good evening, everyone. This is going to be a mega review or multiple item review and talk about the uh, touchscreen laptops that are on the market now, as well as the uh, Sinsu Solo brush pin for touchscreens and tablets. It looks like a normal paintbrush, and the difference I'm, I have read and been told is that the bristles on the end here are designed to react with touchscreens and somehow transfer the heat or whatever down so the computer knows what's going on. And uh, it's nicer than rubbing your finger against the screen to try and draw. I mean, so no, that's the second part is the touchscreen laptop. A lot of people uh, are buying these new hybrid laptops that have touchscreens and they say, okay, I own one, now what? It's not exactly an iPad, not exactly a tablet. And so what do I do with it? And honestly, in all honesty, they have features that, you know, you wouldn't think you'd need on a laptop, but if you want to experiment a little, it's really cool indeed. Like, uh, if you want to paint on the screen on your laptop, you don't have to buy a Surface or an iPad, which are nice. The Surface is a little bit nicer, nicer unless you go to the iPad Pro. But for a nice painting experience, without sensor pressure sensitivity, which some of them offer, you can go with uh, something like the Sinsu Solo touchscreen laptop and in one of the open source applications that are available like GIMP or uh, Krita and I will show you those and how the brush reacts. I'll open up GIMP here so you can see it. What amazes me is that you have not seen really a whole lot on the uh, web about doing this with them. Let's tell them what size we want. 8x5, that works for just our experiment. We've got the brush here. We can tell it, okay. I'm gonna. Oh, another nice thing with the uh, these apps is you can use plus and minus to zoom. You can paint, which is a really nice feature. You can create whatever you, you can think to create. If you want to get more serious, like scan or work in, which is what I've done, which I can show you in a few minutes because we're going to be working on that. And I'm going to shoot video while we do this as I work on the details, but you know, you can just, you know, freehand draw. And it gives you another tool where you're not going, eh, and it's more natural feeling than rubbing your finger against the screen. Getting back into Krita, which is really a digital painting app, which is a really nice freeware app. This is an illustration, started as a drawing. I was not totally happy with it, the way it turned out, so I brought it into Krita here, and have started editing it. All right, in this one, we're going to work on some highlights and details. I've scanned in the picture already and done most of the work already, right, but now we're going to go into the details. I'm not the greatest artist, would like to get better, but it's just something fun and uh, you have a lot of great digital apps. One of the biggest things that's important in a digital app is to use layers. That way you can build things up. Like you can see, like I can turn this off. This is what just adds different detail levels. Then I would uh, create a new detail level. I'm going to call it D2 for detailed level two. If you, if you name them, this will help you to know what you're doing. When you have a lot of levels, it helps not to just have level 1, 2, 3, 2, 20. All right, now that we've done that, one of the nice parts about Krita and GIMP is if you, as long as you have the cursor within the image area, you can literally use the plus and minus key to zoom, which is fantastic. This is based roughly on a character from one of my uh, books. It's from my Separa books, which I'm working on editing. Now that we've got that, we're going to zoom in to the face area and add some highlights because that you know that's a natural part of life. You've got the sun, etc. So we've got D2. We want to set the opacity to we'll say 50, right around 50 50% if we can. Make sure we've got like a light color. Here we go. Now, in Krita, I'm going to get this in frame. I'm going to go up here 
and check right up here is my area where I can set my brush size. I want to make sure we have something that's reasonable. Two pixels, we can try maybe a little bit more. Well, let's see here. There we go. Sun reaction here. And we can always undo that off of braids here. We'll just do some darker color here in a minute. Let's do a little bit here. Okay, we got that going. Now we can uh, turn down the opacity a little bit, make it look a little more natural. Go down to, there we go, maybe a little bit higher. 35, 45%. Okay, that's looking okay. So remember, we're at like 283%, uh, so it looks slightly different when we zoom out. Gotten that, now I'm going to do a darker bit. So I will go to my eyedropper tool, which would be P. Okay. Let's see here. Do a brush. So we can always zoom in closer to what we want to work on. So we'll just do my old trick of use dark like that. Just kind of show the curls or the rolls where the hair would be styled or woven here. And at 49% op opacity, it looks okay. Medieval hairstyles were different than we have them now. There we go. I'll go with that. Now we can zoom out. Looks a bit better. We can also, to add depth, we will zoom in here. Oh, we have the mouse over here. And zoom. Then we're going to do some darkening here. But in this, we may want it a little lighter. Make sure we didn't undo anything we wanted to keep. Well, that's okay. So since we want even lighter detail here, we will create a new layer. Call it the properties. Okay, detail layer three, D3. Exciting stuff here. And I'll knock down our opacity, 42%. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. 32%, let's see here. Yeah, we'll paint in a little little shadow from the hair. Let's see, we can always undo. Control Z is our friend. Just a little. Be careful here. Add that. I'm just add this down the side. Little shadow here. Where the hair is blocking the light from reaching the face. All right. There we go, we can zoom out. See, well, we do undo that a little bit. There we go, and just along the edge there. Now the eyes, we want to have the classic reflection, so we go and make sure it's white, then we just paint. A reflection here and paint one right here and we've got that really nice effect that you see in a lot of artwork especially anime or most forms of animation and cartooning have it but we want a little uh, blush on the character save always save 
And this is all without having to use really expensive software. Credit is free. The Sensu Solo is not very expensive, and it gives you a nice option other than trying to finger smudge your way through the uh, pro production here. Got the face here. So we're going to zoom in. Okay. Okay, we get some pink going on here. So a color wheel. Okay, maybe something like that. So then we just I want something a little. Maybe not that. We need more pink going on. It's blush. It's not going to be gray. So we'll try that. Go get some something here. This might look even better. Let's see, got this blush in here. Shape it like that. No expert here, guys. Just a budding artist, but it shows you what you can do with the brush. And you're not having to go click, click, click in, give yourself a really advanced case of carpal tunnel, which is not what anyone wants. We'll just do it like that. I saw this video where in the historically that ladies would like pinch their cheeks or whatever before cosmetics. Okay, so we got that. And we can cramp down the opacity. Hmm. We may want to go back to the drawing board on this one, but that's okay. We'll just make a new layer called we'll call it blush. Being able to illustrate your characters helps you get an idea of what you're thinking about and what you, something might look like, even if you clearly know that you're not the greatest artist. But it helps. I'll get some more music like that. Just the color wheel. Let's see, we'll just do it like this. This looks really funky now. We can, let's see here, we'll get it in here. Then we will knock down the opacity. Something ridiculous like, okay, and we will, so we've got a blender tool. Some do, some don't. But for free app, we really can't complain much here. Let's see, we'll just do a little touching up here. Even it out. Zoom out and see how it looks. Maybe. Ah, it's not bad for a first attempt, so we'll leave that now. And we'll actually, while we're on this layer, we might want to do this. A little shadow here, maybe. The nose. Maybe not. Some artists can pull that off. I'm not certain if I can at this point in my creativity. But we may do, let's see, we'll hop down to to layer th D3 because it gives us a little bit more area to work or as far as opacity goes. And I click the lock button, well, that's okay. We'll unlock. Okay. We will just, oh, wrong color. It's okay though, we'll just go into here. Okay. I'm no expert, but that looks okay for what we want to do. The lip area here. OK. 
Okay, I said I'm new to this, but it shows you what the brush can do. Okay, boom, boom, boom. That looks okay, but we will add a highlight. Okay, we might want a sm smaller brush for this. So we will go up here and tell the computer something around a one brush would be good. We might be at 400% now, but when we zoom out, it will look much better. There we go. So we will zoom out. I mean, it looks better. And where is our? Let's see which ones I put to sleep here. There we go. Save. Let's see. Maybe put in little shadows in the hair. And zoom in here. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. Like I said, uh, it's a lot you can do with a computer now. Tell it I want black. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, we will tell it larger brush. Show like shadows here. They'll grant it up. We may we'll go to a lighter layer because that's a bit strong. There we go. I put in some shadows there because the back of the hair is me blocking the light. And there we go. The neck here, a little shadow. All right. Zoom in. I hope this is this will be something that will go up on DVR. I hope this helped you guys out to see what you can do with your Sinsu Solo brush and some op openware freeware apps.